It reminds me of Funky Town lip sync that. It's not a bad thing to sound like. Salted caramel ice cream by Metronomy. Um, and speaking of flavours, I might run through some of Helen Bull's list of the Tudor Chris flavours uh, before they were taken over by Walkers, once based in Sandyford, Newcastle, a canny bag of Chris. Might run through some of those after we've said a lot to ride. Right, yeah, Andy and Steve join us. Hey, guys. Hello. Hello. How are you? Very good, very good. Any of these float your boat, guys? Fried tomato and bacon flavour crisps. Do you remember so, any of these? Yeah, I love them. Fried onion. Yeah, I'll have those. Hot dog and mustard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Pork and apple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kipper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Steve. I like um, crisps. Gammon and pineapple. Yeah. So, Steve, you've gone for all of them so yeah. far. Yeah, yeah, I Great, well, there you go. <laughs> Big vote of confidence from Steve. This, this is because this morning we've had some <laughs> Chinese crisps, which are grilled eel flavour. Have you tried those, Steve? I haven't tried those, but if you can arrange it for me. They're on his list. We can have these. Let's, list, yeah. let's get these sent to Steve. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Put, putting them in the jiffy bag right now, Steve. Does anybody remember baked bean flavoured crisps? I, Ooh, I, could, I, I think I, I remember do. ketchup flavoured crisps. No, I think, yeah. yeah, baked bean. This must be, how old am I? It must be about 45 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> right. Did you insist? Did you insist you on, ba- on? Did you insist on baked bean crisps on the, uh, on the ride rider? Oh, ride uh, rider. Yeah, that would be very difficult. I, I mean, I I can remember eating them when I was little. Uh, but my I've said since to my dad, "Can you remember baked bean crisps?" And he said no. So I'm just wondering if they actually exist. They, no, they did. They did exist. They, they did. did. They did okay. exist. And I'm sure before. I want to say they were a golden wonder, the baked bean, but there were ketchup flavour crisps as well. Well, but mm. I'm sure before the next records are out, and certainly before you leave us, people will have provided documentary evidence of the existence of the baked bean crisps. Yeah. How are you guys? Good. Just I do miss prawn cocktail skips. That's handy now, is it? Yeah, that's me. Andy, yeah, yeah, I thought. Yeah, you miss prawn. Don't they make them don't anymore? Don't anymore. I've not seen them for ages. Mm. Oh. Well, again, Are we we'll allowed put... to say brand names? Yeah, yeah. We've, we're on a highway. I'm to a barbecue, we're on a highway to hell now, Andy. A barbecue hula hoop man myself. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, that's that's controversial. Steak McCoy's for me. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is run and run. This item, it crisps has, on the radio. Yeah, that's right. Was, yeah. Yeah, was... Do you think a hula hoop? Just to get this clear, Andy and Steve, would yeah. you say a hula hoop is a crisp? Yes. Yeah. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. What yeah. else would it be? Who else? Who, As a yeah. snack. Who else would it be? <laughs> <laughs> that's a really difficult question. That. That's, that's almost existential, that. Yeah. Uh, but No, um, I just wonder, because, would you say a mini cheddar is a crisp? No, that's a no. biscuit. Good men. Good men. <laughs> Glad you said that. Yeah. Well, there you go. Well, right, that's all we've got time for. Now, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I must say hello to um, I don't, Listen to this, guys. Emma and Tom Jones have been on. Say, um, uh, please tell Andy and Steve that seeing Ride play at Festival Number no. 6 in Port Marion last summer brought back memories of my teenage crush. This made me ovulate. And our, beautiful, <laughs> and our beautiful baby Bryn was born nine months later. Wow. <laughs> you see the profound effect you have, guys, and you don't the, know. The right effect. The right um, effect. Um, and Bryn's middle name is Quarolt. No way. No, it's not. I've, I've added that for extra detail. But Quarolt's no. actually um, a, a, a forename in Spain, apparently, I, I learnt recently. Is it? Yeah, it's a female um, really? forename, yeah. Right. Is it Belgian? No, it's Catalan. Catalan. Oh, right. I got it into my head. It's Belgian. I always meant to La Mac is Belgian. This is where I was getting into this mistake. Yeah. Right. So it's Catalan. Yeah. Right. Amazing. Um, and um, well, we're going to talk about the new record. We are going to talk about the record. We Don't will. worry, guys. It won't yeah, just yeah, yeah. be about crisps. Yeah. Um, uh, this is not a safe place. It's out on the sixteenth of August. But also, you you've picked some tunes uh, that that you would like to hear, or maybe had a, a sort of influence on you. I was quite surprised somehow. I don't know why to find that either both of you, someone, was uh, big Japan fans. Yeah, that was... Um, I chose that track. Yeah. Um, is that Andy or Steve? That's Steve. Steve, sorry, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah I, just, um, I just think Japan, they always sound good. They always sound current to me. Yeah. Um, I think they were a bit odd back in the 80s. They were quite experimental. Uh, quite surprised at how commercially successful they were, given that. But if you listen to sort of the album tracks, there's... Yeah, the, the sounds of the records are really good, really interesting, lots of good synth sounds. Yeah. G- wasn't Ghost number one? Yeah. Was the, it? The maddest number one ever. Extraordinary. Yeah. Wow, was it? Is, That's yeah. amazing, yeah. 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 Uh, they were very glamorous, of course, which uh, of course. we have well, attempted towards uh, trying to perfect that sort of a look in the early days of Ride. No. 
No. Wasn't he famously called the most beautiful man in pop or something like I think that? He was David Sylvian, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Mick Kahn, sort of those. Uh, I'm not always a fan of the fretless <laughs> bass, but he had all those serpentine bass lines, and he became a sculptor. But he's sadly no longer with us, no, is he, right. Mick Kahn? Yeah. Well, well, this is uh, to. Uh, uh, I love this. Yeah, lovely. Uh, let's hear it. Japan, Quiet Life. <laughs> We must play the whole of this for an early yes. riser, I think, it, having yeah. been brought to our attention by a... the guys from Riot. Dorothy Lepkowska said Quiet Life by Japan. I'm 17 again, which um, uh, Steve and Andy from Riot had chosen. Um, uh, tell us about this one, Guy. Who chose this? Um, that was me, Andy. Yeah, go on. Tell us. Uh, this is um, Harold Grosskopf. Yeah, I only heard it for the first time about two weeks ago when it was tweeted about by mm. an artist called Hi, DJ artist. Yeah. Hi. Um, yeah, she said it was a, a, a track she used to put on... I think it was part of the warm-up at clubs when the club the doors would open. She'd put it on that this album, which is from 1980, I think. Yeah, it's and a- uh, the track's called. The German name is I think it's so wheat so good. Which so, means so far so good. So far so good. Yeah. It's this album synthesis. It's funny, pit this. I was thinking about having it as a freak album on my show. The freak zone soon because it's a, that it's from 1980. As you said, it's a real cult classic amongst people who love the electronica and crowd rock. Uh, it's a it's a great thing. He's he's been knocking around. He's played with people like cosmic jokers who are the sort of really obscure crowd rock bands. But he's a sort of um, it's a great record. That sounds absolutely brilliant. It does sounds lovely. Oh, yeah. Like Let's play the whole of it for an early yeah, riser. Absolutely, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So uh, Steve and Andy are with us for the next half hour and we'll be talking about their new album Six Music This is BBC Radio Six Music Uh, whilst that was playing, Andy and Steve from Ride, we were discussing with our producer Lorna, from, uh, who's from Aberdeen, well, the practicalities of going and seeing Ride on the 5th of December at, at the, the Lemon, Lemon Tree. Tree. Which will be a great show. <laughs> yeah, it's a great place to see. That is Ride, Future Love, a track we've been playing and loving a lot uh, on this network. Steve and Andy are here. And um, every time you hear that or any of the new stuff, do you still get a kind of thrill of thinking, this is, we are back and we are doing this brilliantly? Well, just on a personal level, I'm glad you played it because we start rehearsing tomorrow, so it's good to <laughs> just be reminded of it how it goes. But yeah, it is. It's great when you when you kind of do a track that you all buzz off and then you hear it on the radio. It's extra special. That yeah. never loses it's its excitement, space, does though. it? It's funny that. You know, does it, does on, it? I don't know because I even it, sometimes if I if I've got mates doing a radio yeah. show, say, "Oh, I'm on my way, so and so, give us a shout out," and I still get childishly excited, even though I've spent half my life on the radio. Do, do you um, do you guys still? Is it still a thrill hearing your records over the radio? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. And um, th- I just get the sense from reading the things you said about it that there's an absolute, not one well, well, I don't say this that it should be surprising, but there's an absolute sense of rejuvenation and reinvigoration and thinking this is a great thing that we're about at the moment. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, it's been going from strength to strength, really. We did an album a couple of years ago called Weather Diaries, yeah. and, and it was like the first one for 21 years, I think. And that kind of set the ball rolling. And... Then we started to make this one kind of while we were on tour doing the last tour, mm. promoting the last one. Yeah. So it's kind of been pretty seamless. You know, we were still demoing while we were going off doing bits and pieces of touring. So has it been important to keep momentum? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of, well, that momentum has, seems to have happened naturally. Yeah. When you came back together again, I mean, I can't remember now. Was it was it for a specific thing? Did you think it was an anniversary of an album? Did you think it was going no. to be a short-lived thing, or did you not plan it at all, just so go and see how it goes? It's a very short-lived thing that then became more right. over time. Yeah. So it was the intention was just to get back together for a bit? Yeah. Right. But you, you decided you all liked each other again, <laughs> and being in a room together. I think it was, um, it was touring for almost a whole year, being on the road together. Mm. Yeah. And it was like, it just made, you know, sound checks, we'd come up with new bits of music, uh, started jamming together. Um, yeah, and it was that. We we found that we actually enjoyed playing music together, and it was like the next natural step was to um, make some recordings. Yeah, yeah. By the time we finished that tour, the reunion tour, we were we had enough 
going on to realise that, yeah, we could do some new music. And it was important, I guess, that it was the four That's of you. Because right. some yeah, people reunite, but yeah. without one member or without two or, you know, but it, it was important to you guys that it was the four. Yeah, I mean, it just felt like it always was just us four. Yeah. 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 Do, play, do, do playing now... Um, is there a sense of, I mean, and I've read something you said, Andy, about the sense of, you know, you, you feel that what you were about when you were 18 is still what you were about now, whether that's about wanting to make music that is a great pop with an experimental edge. I mean, does it, is there, is, do you feel like it's the same, it's connecting to what you were about then when you were teenagers? Yeah, I mean, a really good way of getting grounded in that was doing the reunion tour itself, because it was all old songs. Yeah. Um, and then to, to make an, a, an album where... Um, we're just all bringing in ideas, which was really cool. Because and also we brought in Errol Alcon to produce it, and we th we were thinking of that being an element of newness to it all. Mm. Um, and so I think for Weather Diaries, we were sort of looking out and sort of trying to pull together things that we wouldn't have done before, maybe. Um, and then now making the next one, I think we're kind of settled back into let's. I mean, from my point of view, anyway, let, I just wanted to get back into what Ribe was into right at the very beginning. Um, looking back at the influences we had when we started. So so from an outward-looking record, it's more of an inward-looking one now. Right. We're going to play... Let's play the new single, which is Repetition. As, as a, this has a more sort of an electro feel than people expect from Ride a lot of the time, doesn't it? Yeah, it's got that Steve Querrell bass line on it now. Yeah, which, um, on the Juno 6. On the Juno 6, yeah. They wouldn't let me have the fretless bass, unfortunately. Would they not? But, um, <laughs> so I had to, yeah, it's a synth bass, but... yeah. 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 It's it's kind of got that electro stuff going on, but I think the the heart of the track is a little bit more po post punk. You know, it's yeah. got a bit of a fall or public image kind of backbone. Have you been? That's informed the new record a bit, hasn't it? I've been thinking. It has, yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, it's, a lot of the tracks were written with that kind of sound in mind, sort of like a post punk thing. And and you meant just for you, you mentioned Daryl there, Daryl Alkin. Has he been? Who's been? You know, the, the for the the weather diaries and now uh, this is not a safe place. Yeah. Is he, is he? Do you think he's been crucial to to the new ride sound? I'd say yes. I yeah. think he's come on and and just become part of the. You know, is like a. I can't imagine doing an album without him now. Um, it's it's sort of like having Alan Mulder as well, who yes. mixed the original records. The team of Alan's team, you know, Alan's people, and then Errol and his team, together is a really good balance. Okay. This is the track then that, that I'm not, not Andy, you said this, this is the absolute heart of the new album, yeah, you think, yeah. In some ways, yeah. Just kind of, you know, lyrically it's kind of got a lot of um, stuff in it that kind of ties with other songs and then musically as well, like, like I mentioned, it's got some of the common influences with the other material as well, so, okay. yeah. This is Ride and Repetition. Do you get the uh, opportunity to play a big throbbing synth live on stage now, Steve? Um, we've been discussing this. Yeah, we've talked <laughs> about it. Like I so said, we, we've, we start rehearsals actually on Monday, yeah. so it remains to be seen. Right. I don't know. I think oh. you should. It, yeah, I think couldn't be. you do it on a guitar? <laughs> well, good. that's very tempting. Of course <laughs> it is. That's yeah. throwing a spanner in the works there, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> opening a whole can of worms. You could, co you could start that off down the front, foot on the monitor on a guitar. Yeah. Leg warmers? Leg warmers? No. 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 Uh, no that, uh, this is Andy and now. Steve from Ride. That is uh, Repetition, the new single from the album that comes out on the 16th of August. This is not a safe place. It's an interesting title. It, this is not a safe place. Does it refer to anything in particular? It's, it's one of those album titles that comes from a lyric of a song. So uh, the song being In This Room, which finishes the album. Yeah. Um, but it's just one of those, you know, actually was suggested as a title for the album by the artwork team who did the sleeve. It's a good title. Um, they, we, they were um, given a few tracks to sort of like get their ideas together and one of them was that song. And What's the concept of the sleeve? Because no one's seen it yet. Ah, okay. Well, um, it's a picture which might remind some people of the Nowhere sleeve, which is uh, mm. a blue ocean sort of oceanscape, if that's right. the word. Okay. With a swell of a wave on it. And it's a similar kind of view of the sea, but with a hand reaching out. Yeah. Which um, in, the, in our picture kind of you don't know whether it's what's going on there it's a bit more of a I, I was very say, ambiguous i was gonna say i have seen it guys because it's there it's on is, is that that's it yeah yeah it could well be on it the, is uh, on the back of the press release yeah right but i mean people who With people who are listening won't yeah. have seen yeah. it yeah. this is working yeah. well on radio it is yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely yeah well we've already had a fine radio <laughs> with crisps Chris. on the radio so if everyone know, could just refer to the press release <laughs> I, what i'll do now 
<laughs> what I would do, if you have the press release handy, if you turn to page four... It's on there, yeah. All yeah. the live dates are on there, which reminds me to say, this is quite interesting. Two separate emails here have come into us from Catherine Taylor, who says she's looking forward to seeing you play in Brisbane in a few mm -hmm. weeks, and also Craig, who says, I'm looking forward to seeing him ride in Brisbane soon. So two individual... Two Brisbane people coming. So there's at least two, at least two people. Yeah. But I'm, I'm just surprised that, yeah, that, that you're going kind of everywhere, aren't you? Yeah, this, the Australian dates have been quite a long time in the making. We've been trying to get that tour together for a long time. So in a way, it might be part of the last tour. I'm not sure now. But we know we're treating it as part of the new yeah, tour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're going there uh, in a couple of weeks, actually. Lovely. Tell us about the influence of the uh, the artwork of uh, Basquiat on the, on, on the making of this record. Right, so the songs, the first bunch of songs, including Repetition and a few others, got written at the beginning of 2018. And I'd just basically been to see the Basquiat um, exhibition at the Barbican mm. and just kind of been really struck by him as a, as a person really um, and the fact that it was kind of arty in late 80s kind of, and, I, and I'd come out having bought the, the, the book of the exhibition and been reading it and just kind of like experiencing things through his eyes a little bit um, just was really cool to, to see how he how he was and and um in, in the exhibition itself if anyone's seen it you know it's lots of stuff of films of him mm. walking around new york and all the stuff about the graffiti that he used to tag so before he was an artist he was a graffiti artist yeah and he used to leave three lines um as a sort of tag around new york and um i think it got mentioned in this exhibit thing that um the reason for that might be that it was hobo code which meant this is not a safe place so um, ah. you would be a hobo in New York, uh, and you'd see this see this sign, and it would mean don't go into That's this house. That's interesting, right? Because um, they do. I knew there was a code for this is a safe place. You used to chalk it on the side of trains and stuff, didn't they? So you can keep here. Yeah. yeah. But that's interesting. Wow. So um, Basquiat used this book called the Symbol Source Book by Henry Dreyfus, and it's full of these really interesting things like the hobo code. Wow. Um, so it's in there if anyone wants to check it out, and it's all over our artwork, artwork for the album as well. We kind of used it a lot. Great, that's fascinating. That's Every fascinating. song on the album's got its own symbol now. Great, yeah, great. Um, you, we should say then that this is not a safe place. The album we're talking about by the rejuvenated ride out 16th of August on Wichita Recordings. Uh, UK tour in November. You, we just said that they're off to um, uh, the other side of the world soon. But then back in the UK in November, December for a big tour. Check out the details of this. It begins... Kicks off at Northwich Waterfront on the 29th Norwich. of November. Yep. Norwich. Yeah. Northwich. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Then, That's then where a, I live. Apologies. Then a European tour in uh, early next year. But check out all this uh, uh, ride's websites and details. And, um, yeah. And we're going we're gonna to finish, guys, with another track that you've picked. Big Youth. Oh yeah, yeah. This is a a, a new a new rejuvenated um, sort of start for Trojan, I think. Tra right. Trojan Jamaica started, and it's been started by Zach Starkey actually, All right. um, who's always been into that stuff. Um, and they've done a record uh, which is all versions of blues songs, and I think it's called Red, Gold, Green, and Blue, if I remember right. And this is a remix by Youth of Big Youth. Great. Right. Great gunslinger, uh, yeah. Gunslinger. Right. Big youth, yeah. Yeah, all right. Um, um, fabulous. Um, See you down the front, Steve, and your leg warmers and your guitar. Yeah, looking at forward to it. At some point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for dropping by, guys. Lovely Thank to you chat. Guys. Thanks, thanks very much. Thanks a lot. Thank Cheers. you.